So first question I have for you. Um, Facebook underwent a pretty big overhaul, I guess it was last year, right? Mm -hmm. That made the site two times as fast? Is yeah, that, that's is right. Is that correct? So with a project of that size, where did you even begin? How did you start conceptualizing that? So, I mean, really the first thing is just to go take lots of data and go figure out what's going on. So this is something that we had, uh, so the first round is just build tools, make sure we're measuring the right things, make sure we're actually measuring the things we care about, and then really try to drill it down and figure out where is this time going, why is this slow. And, and we, started, we, you know, we started off in the summer with the goal that we wanted to be cutting it in half by the end of the year. So we also sort of started from the standpoint of, if this site were going to load in two and a half seconds, what would it have to look like? Um, and obviously it looked a lot different. And so we sort of, going from these two ends, started up, built a plan, sort of spent you know, probably a month building a plan for it, and then uh, just tried to get it executed the rest of the year. Hmm. So um, I was reading some, some of your stuff. Can you talk about what Big Pipe is and how does that factor yeah. in? Yeah. So Big Pipe is essentially a, a process for progressively rendering the page. So if you, if you think about the Facebook page, there are you know, a whole bunch of different sections of the page, and these are actually fairly independent. And each one of these to generate it has to go through a series of steps. You have to, uh, the server has to gather data, has to turn it to HTML, sends it back to the browser. The browser then has to pull in all the static resources referenced by this and then actually render it as a page. And so instead of doing sort of all of this for everything, you know, each of these steps mm -hmm. sequentially, we broke it up and said we're going to do, you know, we're, for each of these pages, we're going we're to pipeline them. And so the first one will start. So as soon as the, as soon as the server gets a request, as soon as it knows it's not going to redirect, it sends back a header telling the browser to start loading in JavaScript. And then as each subsequent, uh, we call them pagelet, each part of the page finishes that stream back to the browser and it can start to render it. Uh, so what happens is you get uh, the part of the page you really care about pops up really fast. And through the whole process, you get much more parallelism. And it also has a really nice feature that over time, if you add things at the bottom of the page, you can do that without affecting the time Hmm. For the user to get that initial, you know, the thing they really care about, which is right at the top. So, what are some of the best practices that you uh, you use? Uh, things like image spriting, that, that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, so we'll, <coughs> so we'll try to image sprite everything, or at least everything we can. And you know, obviously, a lot of the content is dynamic, so you can't sprite things like profile photos. But uh, there's lots of icons on the page that we uh, we sprite. Uh, trying to keep JavaScript and CSS very small, so that's something we monitor all the time. Uh, in general, what the best practice is, what we try to do is as much as possible get the be best practice rolled up in some sort of framework or something that's very easily tested so that instead of having to have you know, all of our developers who are building new code have to have a lot of complicated rules that they're worrying about instead of building their product, try to get these rolled up into our framework. So a lot of things we've done have been around building better JavaScript frameworks, building uh, you know, toolkits for, uh, for UI objects and all the CSS, and so as, as much as possible get those best practices rolled up into the, into the frameworks and the tools. Are there techniques that you tried that, that didn't work? Anything you can sort of share um, in that regard? Well, the biggest one is, is sort of the, and we at one point I had a hope that you know, well, we're going to have tools that are going to be able to catch any regression before it happens, and that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've sort of accepted the fact that things are changing all the time. We, we change our product really fast. And so, uh, so this idea that you're going to run through everything and make sure that it's good, make sure that it's fast before you launch it, that sort of style doesn't really work for us. We really need to be more like we're going to have tools that catch these things after the fact. Um, we've done, uh, yeah, and in general, things that, things that sort of transform all the code into being faster, those are things we've tried and they help, but you sort of get a one-time bump and then you're getting slower again. Mm -hmm. So we've actually had more success with the things that sort of separate it into this is the stuff that's really critical for the user, and we're going to keep that separate and keep it really fast, and then let you know have a separate section where you can play around with things and not be at them, you know, sort of always afraid that you're going to be, you know, making the whole site slower. Right. So, are there the last question I have for you, and you touched on this a little bit? Are there is, is there a process for introducing a new feature, or do you just kind of go with it and then correct after it's out yeah. of there? So we definitely follow the model of. You go with it and correct. So, so there's some things that happen. If you, you check in code, um, to me, we always have somebody review it. And in terms of tests, we run it through a lot of tests. Uh, those include performance tests. 
But in general, we specifically don't want to have sort of a launch checklist where before I do something, I have to go talk to 10 different people, mm -hmm. any of which can tell me no. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of want to optimize the, 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 you know, the, the usual case is that people are doing their job and getting their product launched, and in the unusual case that they've caused a secondary effect that's a problem. Uh, we're very focused on being able to detect that and catch it and deal with it quickly. Hmm. And obviously, you know, we want to catch things like I made the site, you know, twice as slow. We want to catch that on the way. But sure. often these things are subtle, and I made something a couple percent slower, and a few of these things interacted in an unexpected way. Hmm. And so those are things where we really focus on either on essentially automated testing or automated collection of data from our production site to basically let us know when we've broken something. So there's a lot of stuff that's actually happening live, right? I mean, it's all out there, and you're working and fixing it as you go along, is that right? Yeah, and, uh, and I guess, well, the other thing is that live sort of, there's a lot of different kinds of sure, live, sure. and so usually when we launch something, we will launch it to a very small number of users, and we can then basically test, hmm. you know, do uh, everything from are these users still using the site as much as we want them to, sure. <laughs> to uh, yeah. you know, are we getting errors in the log, to uh, is the, uh, the performance of this, uh, this test group different, and then we can slowly dial it up and just watch. And so it's, yeah, much easier to basically say, like, we're going to start dialing this up to these users, and if it's slow, we'll catch that and dial it back, but if it's not, then that's great, and we can go ahead and launch it rather than having to go hunt down some performance expert who, uh, who is still likely to miss the problem by just inspection. I mean, one of the things we think about in terms of uh, performance regressions are actually often a lot like bugs. It's just sort of unintended consequences of something you did. And so, so the idea that you can talk to an expert to know you, you, know, you don't talk to an expert to know you don't have bugs. You sure, tested it right. so by the same, same token. We don't uh, sort of expect that somebody with a checklist is going to make our code fast. Great. Well, thanks very much for coming by. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, thank you. So